Hi everyone, I've just decided to make a short video about my experience with pinched optics on my 61mm space cat from William Optics. In the interest of being straightforward, I'll just say that at the end of the story, the telescope does go back to William Optics in Taiwan. However, from things I've learned along the way, there's a couple of different causes that can all manifest as similar results. So this video is also about all the things I've tried along the way that can be done on the consumer end and which might work for you. And then also how William Optics dealt with it once it ultimately needed to go back. Now, I don't know if this is even worth saying, but I don't have any relationship with William Optics. Um, obviously, I'm a nobody, so it's not like they had a business reason to treat me differently than anyone else. So everything I say about them is just a reflection of my experience. So I bought the telescope in 2023. It was my Christmas present. And they did this deal where you could get the Space Cat and the matching guide scope for the same price. Um, I knew this was not going to come to our UK retailers anytime soon, so I went directly to William Optics. Unfortunately, I was going to an expedition to Antarctica and I wasn't going to be home anytime soon. So I emailed them to see if there was any way they could hold it for me. Um, I got an email back from Tim at William Optics who said, no problem. So I put down a deposit. They held it for me until I got back. And then they also applied this New Year's promotional discount, which was really great. And they shipped it to me in January. So overall, it was all just really smooth and pleasant. We had an abysmal winter for imaging, so the opportunities to test it out have been scarce. But when I finally put it to imaging, um, I noticed that while the field was beautifully flat, the stars had these artifacts on them. Now, this is the first time that I've dealt with something like this because I'm primarily into planetary, and my only other refractor is a 51 millimeter space cat, which has always been as good as it gets. So after asking around, um, it turns out that it is actually pinched optics. From the amount of examples that I've seen, um, it seems like it's not that uncommon, but it could be caused by a few different things. So different solutions worked for different people. So the first and easiest thing to try was letting it cool for longer and using a stronger setting on my dew heater, just in case cold was the reason, uh, thermals, glass not stabilizing, and so on. It didn't change anything for me, and I'm not surprised, to be honest, because it never really gets that cold around here, but it's worth trying out. Another thing people have done is something like a one millimeter or two millimeter aperture mask, a cutout circle that can go on the front of the dew shield and decrease the aperture, or even a 3D printed cap for the front that covers that extra one millimeter of aperture that red cuts have. This one I kind of didn't want to do, I don't enjoy arts and crafts, I didn't want anything at the front, and I sort of wanted the problem fixed and not covered, uh, so I didn't do it. But by all accounts, it works like a charm, so for you that might be a no-brainer. At this point, I was thinking, this is somewhere around the front cell, but I have no idea which screws do what, and I don't dare touch anything myself, so I emailed Tim back. Um, I actually really wanted to avoid sending the telescope back, that was always my sort of very last option. So I emailed and I said, um, look, the stars are like this. Is there anything that I can do from my end? And I got a response really quickly and Tim sent back this graph. So this is officially from William Optics. As you can see, their examples look pretty much identical to mine. They suggest loosening the retaining screws at the very front to relieve lens stress. These get tightened for transport, so I figured that would be it. And lots of people actually fix their issue by doing this. What you need to do is remove the dew shield and the screws you want are the ones closest to the edge. Then take a small flat head screwdriver and you need to turn each screw one full rotation counterclockwise, then tighten back until it sort of just makes contact. It might be tempting to turn it just a little bit incrementally, but that may not work as intended, um, probably because releasing it less than a full turn doesn't allow it to move. After you've done all four, leave the telescope to rest for a few hours. I was absolutely sure that this would fix it because it's the most commonly mentioned solution and also their examples of lens stress looked pretty much identical to mine. Uh, fortunately, when I tested it again, there was no change. And it wasn't even that it didn't fix it completely, but there was no change at all. So I repeated the process again, 
And after that, I knew that it had to be something internal like lens spacers or something in the light path. At this point, I emailed Tim back and I said, okay, I've done this and this, and then I did it again for good measure and there's no movement. I didn't get a response back immediately, but I decided not to read into this because people go on leaves and emails get missed and so on. So I gave it about 10 days and then I emailed back again and I got a response back immediately as always. And he said, okay, it needs to go back to factory for readjustment. I decided to go for it and I actually offered to take it somewhere locally if they can arrange for an authorized retailer to make repairs. But they said, no, it needs to come back to us, which I kind of get because that way they're in charge of the whole process. So I said, yes, let's send it back. And they actually arranged and paid for FedEx to come and pick it up from my house. This might be super common in the US or something, but this is actually the first time that I've ever had courier pickup. So they basically came, picked up the box, did the BP thing with the scanner, and I felt like I was living in 2084. This was May 10th, and on June 11th, I got an email saying that the telescope had been shipped back and FedEx uh, had it at my door on June 13th. So from the time that the telescope left my hands to when it was back was exactly four and a half weeks. It took me a week or so to finally get a clear knife night to test it, but as you can see, they've done the job and that is now unpinched. Of course, this is just my own and very recent experience with William Optics. I know there's always people out there who could tell a different story. And I've heard people say, um, you know, if I'm paying this much money for a telescope, then I expect not to have to deal with these issues, which I think is totally fair. We've, I think we've all seen the prices of William Optics telescopes steadily increasing, as with all astrophotography gear. And to be fair, it's not without innovation and improvement on their part. For me, I feel like things happen on production lines, but what's important to me is this kind of standing behind their product and willingness to fix it. So what I'm hoping is that with that price increase, there's been a good investment into this kind of customer service. So ultimately for me, this was a positive experience. Anyway, I hope this was in some way helpful and I'm looking forward to this winter when this cat is going to get some proper imaging time. Till then, clear skies, everyone.